Isaac Newton. That's me. Big hairdo, big brain box, maths genius, engineer, researcher, and one of the most famous scientists of them all. Discoverer of some mega important things about how the world around you works, and inventor of a helpful gadget for cats. Another special thing about me, I was born on the most exciting day of the year, Christmas Day. If I was in your class, I'd be, oh, let's see now, 362 years old. <laughs> Probably the oldest boy in your school. <laughs> no, uh, definitely. We live on a farm in Lincolnshire. I hate farms. Ugh. But I'll come on to that. Here I am with my mum. She called me Isaac after my dad. He was called Isaac first. He died just three months before I was born, so he never got to see me. I was born unexpectedly early, and I was so titsy-teeny tiny. When I arrived, my mum said she could fit me into a milk jug. <laughs> a milk jug! <laughs> I mean, assuming quite a large one. Well, as if it wasn't bad enough not having a dad and all, when I was only three, my mum decided to marry Mr Smith, a vicar from the next door village. The Reverend Smith, if you will. And guess what? I wasn't included. Oh no, they left me behind with my granny, who was a really strict old bat. Isaac, you naughty boy! And went off without me. <laughs> I didn't see my mum again until I was ten. <laughs> and when she did come back, she sent me off to school. So instead of living with her, I had to live with a local apof... apof... apothec... chemist, Mr Clark. He ran the village chemist shop, full of bottles and flasks and cans and cups of cough mixture and spot cream and ointment and unguents and things you drank and things you didn't and... Oh, what's that? In fact, that part I really enjoyed. Nosing around in all his pots and creams and reading all his books about how to make medicines. Being alone was never a problem for me. I'd had enough practice. And I just love fiddling around making things. Oh, mostly things that moved, like windmills, wheels, machines, stuff like that. I made a kite, and I even made clocks. Look, here's a sundial. It uses the sun's shadow to tell the time. And a water clock, so I could count the minutes. Not many people had watches or wind-up clocks when I was around. It's half a bottle a clock. Time for a book. Now, oh, reading. Oh, oh, reading was another thing I loved. It's funny that, because my dad couldn't read, and Mum said he could hardly write his name. <laughs> Just as I was enjoying school, Mum showed up saying I had to go back to run our farm. But I said, hey, Mum, no way, I'm rubbish at farming. I hate fields and cows and manure and pitchforks and ooh ah and haystacks and pigs and chickens and milking and all that rubbish and carry on. I told you already, I like reading and I like books and cogs and wheels and sums and gears and long division and machines and tools and diagrams. You know, stuff. Oh, what does he want? Get those sheep off my land! <laughs> oh no, those sheep have escaped. <sighs> Soon after that, I was sent to study at Cambridge University, the best place to learn things in the country. I'd just arrived with my bag with feather quill pens and some ink and paper. Uh, I'd brought some candles and a candlestick, pyjamas in there somewhere, a few tools, books, uh, cheese, bit of old cog, ruler, uh, set square, probably. Uh, I said books. Did I say books? I said books. Didn't I? Yes. And, oh, and a padlock and a key to lock my desk. And do you know what? I'd also had to bring my own pot to pee in. No toilets either. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> the other students don't look very swatty or hard at work, do they? 
The great thing about my college was that it had a fantastic library. Books are very hard to get hold of in my day, and not many people I know have books at home. I had just got settled in when... <coughs> the dreadful plague struck our town. It was brought here by rats, and it was the most horrible thing. People were dying all around me. The horse and cart would take the dead bodies away every day. It was too dangerous to stay, and we were all sent home. I rushed back to nice, quiet Woolsthorpe as fast as I could. It was very nice to be back at home, just sitting quietly in the garden, thinking hard. My brain was bulging with all the new stuff I had learned at Cambridge. One evening, I was sitting in the orchard under an apple tree, thinking about things. Then, boom, something whacked me on the head. Now, what was that? An apple had fallen off the tree. Now, that set me thinking. No, not about apples. Why do things fall down? Hmm? Have you ever stopped to ask yourself why? Hmm? No, well, maybe not. Well, I have. You see, I love questions like that. Why did it fall down, this apple, and not float or, or fall up? Look, what if everything isn't falling? What if something invisible is pulling it down? <laughs> it does sound mad, doesn't it? <laughs> well, turns out I was right. Now, today, we call this invisible force gravity. It's almost as if there's a giant magnet inside the Earth, pulling everything towards it. Even on the other side of the world, my apple would still fall down. This great thought of mine, this gravity, was a brand new discovery, and it was a totally different way of looking at the world. If you have a brainwave, do you tell everyone about it? I do. No, I don't! I mean, why should other people be allowed to nick your best ideas? For instance, now here's a for instance. I was wondering what light is made of. You know light, don't you? Light, the brightness, that sort of thing. Yes, right, well, do you ever wonder what it's made out of? No? Well, I do. And I decided to find out my first try, and this didn't help a lot, and I wouldn't recommend it at all, was to stare at the sun. Oh, where all the light comes from. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Oh, oh, that hurt. No, it can also turn you blind. In another experiment, I tried to poke a stick behind my eyeball and wiggle it around to see what I could see. <sighs> I'm completely insane, aren't I? Now, don't try this. All I saw were lots of funny colours floating about. Ugh. It was a very uncomfortable experience, but it made me think... Where did they come from? Remember, I did this so you don't have to. Now, supposing there were other colours inside the light we can see. Now, after all, think of a rainbow or, uh, or, or bubbles in your bath. Well, they're full of lovely colours, aren't they? Well, where do these colours come from? So, I bought a prism. Now, that's a thick triangle of clear glass. And I shut all the doors and windows and sat in my room in the dark. Then I let just a teensy chink of light shine through the curtains and onto my prism. The white light split up and on the wall, well, I saw all the colours of the rainbow. Light does contain lots of colours after all. Look, red, orange, yellow. My pesky cat kept pushing open the curtains and letting all the light in, so I cut a little flap for her so she wouldn't annoy me so much. You call it a cat flap. Well, it was me, Isaac Newton, who invented it. Now, even though I was the first one to understand that light is made up of a rainbow of colours, I still didn't tell anyone. Just like the gravity idea, I kept it super top secret. I just know someone is dying to pinch my ideas, so I've got to be extra careful. Well, by now, the nasty old plague was over. Hurrah! And it was time to go back to Cambridge. Hurrah, hurrah! 
I became a professor of mathematics at only 26 years old. Brilliant! The youngest ever! I'm fantastic! Now, today, we will be looking at the world of differential calculus. The thing is that, obviously, I was very interesting when I gave my lectures, but I had a funny feeling that not absolutely everyone was paying me full attention. What do you think? Now, how can you become a brilliant scientist a bit like me? Well, work. Great, isn't it? Well, keep on working and uh, thinking. Uh, well, never mind too much about when you go to bed or um, when you eat or anything like that. Uh, just, you know, read and observe and think and ask yourself hard questions about important stuff, not just rubbish. And if you have a bright idea, quickly jot it down wherever you are. Yeah. Ah, easy. I think other professors and scientists can be... A bit odd, <laughs> laughing and uh, drinking, when they could be reading or, or solving equations or, or getting stuck into differential calculus. Mm -hmm. oh, differential calculus. Mm -hmm. And certainly, I've never found any need to wash very often. It's pointless. Who needs to do that? Oh, that's enough about my smelly feet. Oh. Now that I knew about how light works and how we see, I decided to make a telescope so that I could see things that are far, far away, like uh, planets or stars or meteors or, or comets. Do you remember I was always pretty good at making things? Well, I knocked up a pretty fantastic telescope, I can tell you. Everyone was mad about it. Oh, they'd never seen anything like it in their lives. It was just as if I'd invented a, a mobile phone. I, if I'd had the time. I, I, I wish I had. Anyway, I didn't. <sighs> After so many years of thinking a lot and doing tons of hard work, I started to feel down in the dumps. I didn't sleep enough. I had no nice wife to look after me. I kept fighting with other people about who came up with the big new ideas first. It's mine! I discovered it, I, I would say, about uh, gravity. But this annoying bloke, Bob Hook, kept saying it was his idea, and that really got me down. I had important friends, and one of them was in charge of all the money in the land. Cheer up, Isaac Newton, he said. I've got just the job for you. The Royal Mint. That's the place where all the coins are made. Fantastic idea! Now, see, aha, that got me going again. Now, I rounded up all the baddies who were snipping bits off coins to make illegal new coins and weighed money to make sure it was made of real gold. This poor man's gold coins aren't gold at all. He's been done. You know, I had become a celebrity figure by this time. Discovering gravity makes you pretty well known. And one day, Queen Anne called me to her palace, and with her sword, she knighted me. Arise, Sir Isaac Newton. Thank you for being so brainy and so brilliant. Oh, what a proud day that was. I was getting old and tired after 85 years of hard work and not much sleep. I had lived a very important life, and I was given a funeral fit for a king in Westminster Abbey in London. Because I was dead. Yes. I, Sir Isaac Newton, found out a lot about how the world works. Later, others added to my discoveries about what makes things fall and how things move. But they were not, not one of them, anywhere near as clever as me.